As soon as I dunked it, I came down and I, I opened my eyes and I just, I just saw red. You can touch lives or you can, you know, be a quitter. Isaiah Charles Austin, born October 25th, 1993. Imagine waking up day after day, 6 a.m. workout after 6 a.m. workout, talent good enough to go all the way to the doorstep of your dreams, and then everything gets red. You can't see anything. You regain your vision and can still see the door right in front of you, even touch it so you know it's real. And then they shut it right in your face and tell you to stay away forever. Today's feature can attest to just that. Blessed in the physical gene pool beyond what anyone could ask for at 7 foot 1, made to play the sport of basketball along with a love for the game equaling anyone that's ever felt that love. He dominated competition ever since he was a 6'7 middle schooler on his way to becoming a McDonald's All-American, one of the highest levels of achievements you can have as an amateur. All signs pointed to an eventual lottery selection based on his high school performance, again sized as a 7-footer, and becoming a top 10 shot blocker in college by the time he was ready to leave. But Austin was hiding a very big secret. One he was able to mask from everyone in high school, outside his family and close friends, and also from the plethora of college programs that recruited the top five prospect to come in and lead their team on both ends. It wasn't until he already enrolled in college that word started to get out that he had a serious problem. One that could threaten to jeopardize it all. He missed an easy pocket pass, rolling left one day in practice, and as expected, his coach got on him. Because this was now the second time it happened in just as many plays. Austin said to his head coach, I'm sorry coach, I just can't see those. Now with a grave choice to make, tell the truth about why, or come off as an inferior player that was not as advertised, therefore possibly unplayable, he told the truth. Afraid of the consequences of his secret, his coach and teammates embraced him and his issue and adjusted their plays to put Austin on a different side. One, he wouldn't be blinded by the past and Austin began to take off. Of course, the reason he couldn't see from his right eye was due to an injury he suffered in elementary school on the baseball field. He was struck in the eye with a baseball that loosened his retina and two years later re-injured the eye after a hard slam that detached it almost fully. He did everything he was supposed to and was sure to have at least a first round NBA career. Right before the draft, NBA doctors learned of how bad the situation was with Isaiah and banned him from playing in their league, deeming it a health risk. For this reason and more, Isaiah Austin's growth was stunted. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC, stunted growth. Let's get it, man. Isaiah Austin is a 7-1 power forward center born in Fresno, California and played his high school basketball in Arlington, Texas. Since 7th grade, he was already much taller than his class at 6'4 and had skills perfect for where the game was heading. Big men that could stretch the floor and defend the rim at a high level. Add to that, he could handle the rock as well and finish with both hands. A wiry 7 foot, but that didn't stop him from becoming one of the top players in the country, ranked 5th overall and top 2 at his position behind Nerlens Noel. As a senior, he averaged 15 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 blocks, finishing his high school career as a McDonald's All-American, State Player of the Year, and moved up to a top 3 ranking. With those credentials, there was only one level left to dominate before he was off to embark on a dream he'd been dreaming all his life. Stunt number one, the injury. In hindsight, we all know by now that Isaiah Austin is completely blind in his right eye and even wears a prosthetic to mask the appearance. 
It was first blamed on a baseball hitting him on a miscatch and later reactivated after a slam dunk, but has since clinically been diagnosed to be a degenerative mutation of a chromosome 15 gene that was either passed down genetically from a parent or an unfortunate first case in the family. It's now recognized as Marfan syndrome. Some of the effects of this syndrome are long arms, legs, fingers and toes, scoliosis, and heart issues if strenuous exercise is done. Of course, this fits Austin's description, but wasn't known until just before that fateful draft day when Isaiah walked into the draft party expecting a joyful mood from his family and close friends waiting for his arrival but was met with sadness and his mother in tears trying to rationalize what happened. The news was that the NBA had dove deep into his medical history and found an issue that could hold them liable at any time in the case he severely injured or even worse dies during a league activity. Due to their findings, they banned him from being picked up by a team for the time being. Before all this, Isaiah had committed to Baylor University and was carving out a nice start. Yes, he wore the goggles on his eyes, but many have throughout the years, so his secret was still safe. As a freshman, he was part of a team that had three eventual NBA players and Austin was playing like the best player on the roster. He averaged 13 points, 8 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 block in 29 minutes a game. Stats good enough to fast track the versatile big man to a first round pick at least should he enter the draft. Because of a shoulder injury, he decided to return to school and didn't have the same success. Many see him coming back to school as a growth stunt, but regardless when he entered, the NBA would have tested him anyway. He had a down year across the board as a sophomore, although his blocks per game shot up to top 10 status. After essentially opening him up and looking at everything, he was too great a risk and therefore was informed right before the draft, with all his loved ones in attendance, he would never play a game in the NBA. Stunt number two, the politics and business of sports. We've been having this discussion a lot recently about the business sports becomes once you turn pro. No matter how hard you dream and work toward that goal, business comes first. According to that unwritten rule, Isaiah Austin was deemed bad for business and no team would touch him, even if they wanted to. I hate to use this as an example, but to be clear on a mass level, think about it as shopping for grocery and you're in the fruit and vegetable aisle in front of the avocados. You see one that's the perfect size, shape, color, ripe to the touch, then you turn it a few times and notice it's damaged right at the top. Now you can easily cut that part off and take your chances, but who's doing that? With the abundance of avocados still in the basket, you're most likely to put that one to the side, feel around for a more suitable second option without a second thought about leaving avocado one behind. For lack of better terms, the NBA is similar to that. Players are placed in a pool, extensively and thoroughly examined for not only their skills but to see if they're physically fit for high-level basketball and prodded by teams before they're carefully selected as the best choice. With so many players year after year, Austin stood no chance in the business of the NBA. Maybe if he was averaging 30 points and 10 blocks or something outrageous, but such wasn't the case. But Austin wasn't done playing. He returned to basketball two years later after being fully cleared by doctors, but again, the NBA wouldn't touch him. He began his journey all across the world in leagues here and there. Stunt number three, no longer in consideration. At the point a player decides to go overseas, it's like they're forgotten and the NBA moves on to a more young prospect that just so happens to have the same attributes player one did, which nowadays are a dime a dozen. But Austin was in an even worse situation with his diagnosis. 
Already two years removed from being an honorary draft pick by Adam Silver, just between the 15th and 16th picks, with the condition the NBA had already ruled to be high risk and barred any team from taking the 7-footer, Austin essentially had no chance at an NBA return. He played in Serbia, China, Lebanon, Taiwan, and a few other places in a five-year-long career before retiring June 15, 2021. He was clearly still physically able to play and at a high level, but he was simply no longer in consideration. On draft night, after being an honorary pick, Adam Silver promised Austin a front office job should he complete his degree at Baylor, which he's embarking on as we speak. He also had an insurance plan taken out in college that would pay out a million dollars if for reasons other than his eyesight or shoulder being injured. Because of the Marfan syndrome diagnosis, he did receive that payout. Cool, but nothing could equal playing a possession in the NBA. All in all, Isaiah was still a good player that achieved a great amount of success and experience, especially being blind in one eye for most of his life. Instead of honorary draft selections, I would rather they allow the player to at least suit up for a game and get a shot up to make it official. He would be perfect in today's game, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, stunted growth, and I'm out. <laughs>